That's wonderful. Hasta ahora precisamente cae la niebla y tú puedes ver cómo los montes sobresalen y se forma una una atmósfera como de ensueño. Oh, and it's an amazing place. I heard that just 20 years ago all this was arid, scrub with nothing. Impactante, impactante cómo surge la naturaleza, se abre camino en este valle precioso. Me encuentro casi como increíble ver cómo las parras han logrado conquistar el terreno, subir los montes y realmente hacer un paisaje espectacular. Me encuentro maravilloso. I don't know which is more wonderful, uh, the transformation here or the transformation here. That's Pero impressive. Muchas gracias. Oli estaba a punto de conocer a uno de los hombres más importantes de la vitivinicultura chilena, al pionero que transformó el árido valle de Casablanca en uno de los valles productores de vino más famosos del mundo. I was dreaming a wine, and to make a good wine you have to dream it before, and it's a long dream, and today it's a reality. We have a very nice wine, very beautiful wines here. As I, we dreamed 25 years ago. Ah, oh, it's it's magic. I mean, it's so it's very poetic. But that's just like this valley. This whole valley, magic. Tell me about uh, how you discovered this valley. I was looking for some area in Chile to produce a uh, good Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. Remember, it was a Chardonnay mania those days, yeah. mainly in America. Chile produces mostly red wines, and yeah. it was a must for us to discover a part of Chile to produce a white wine. So sure. basically, everything was from from uh, Santiago to the south, and, uh, and we was a red wine drinking. You, yeah, but you were the pioneers of white wine, and you're yeah. the godfather of Casablanca, of course. Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> if you see today how important is the, the valley outside, well, hugely uh, famous. Yeah, everybody. Everybody knows the name Casablanca exactly. for white wine for freshness. Absolutely. Very famous in. Now in the Sauvignon Blanc, in the Chardonnay, in the Pinot Noir. This is what I love about Chile, though. You have the coastal influence, you have the Andes influence. Yeah. It's not a sizzling, hot Mediterranean country. You're lucky you have the sun, but you also have so many different gradations of different climates and emphasis. Uh, this magic gave me a kind of inspiration to, huh? to make wine here. You know, at the beginning, most of the people, they thought that this, this is too crazy, <laughs> too crazy. <laughs> to, to put vineyard in this valley. But now you can see the basis of, uh, of many wineries, and in, in our case, the basis of more than this is here. Thanks to this gentleman. Yeah. I'm still crazy. Yeah, you are and, still crazy. And that was but crazy. I salute that you was crazy, for right? being crazy. Look at today. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about wine, for such a good wine as a uh, house of Morandé, you want to try it. Here you have the beef cooked for several hours. I think it's a nice match, a nice combination uh, between both. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank High you. High five. <laughs> Gracias. Thank you, Chef. Oh, I do love my job. Oh, cheers. <laughs> For the crazy valley. <laughs> For the crazy valley. <laughs> Salud. When I bought the first land here in Casablanca, the last owner said to me, um, here we have a big problem with frost during the springtime. But I, I, I didn't believe him because we are very close to the sea and because of that it's impossible to have frost here in Casablanca. I planted the, the, the vineyard yeah. and more or less uh, one month later I have a big frost oh. and I lost everything. Oh, man. Everything. I have to replant again. Everybody says it's impossible to have vineyards here in Casablanca, and I insist on planting again. So what did you do to combat the frost? At the beginning, we, we had the heaters, mm -hmm. then we have helicopters, and then we have wind machines, but it uh, doesn't work. It was a really a bad, a bad thing. Yeah, so you needed to do something about it. Absolutely. What's yeah. the solution? Yes, the solution are the data sprinklers. Oh, yeah. And data sprinklers spray water to create an igloo effect to protect the, the bats and the shoots from the frost. We have prepared a team of people who are waiting all night for the damage of the water, and we have a meteorological station that gives us Que nos, nos alerta, tiene una alarma que bajando cierta temperatura suena y el jefe de riego sale a buscar a toda su gente, se preparan y salen a atacar la helada. Es un momento crítico, de mucho nervio, mucha presión. El daño que se puede sufrir en el viñedo es fatal. ¿Cómo 
Vamos, sigan rápido. Atento, atento, aquí en el sector B11. Tenemos 07 y vamos bajando. Atento, atento Raúl, atento, Raúl. Adelante. La temperatura me está llegando a 0,3. Uno tiempo. se va a las casetas de riego inmediatamente y las otras personas van con termómetros digitales recorriendo todos los sectores del campo, monitoreando dónde está más baja la temperatura. Y de acuerdo a eso, llaman por radio a la central de riego y hay una persona preparada que va dando el riego de acuerdo al sector que ha marcado baja temperatura. Estoy con 0,5, necesito que se andar la bomba. ¿Cómo está por ahí la presión arriba? ¿Llega el agua? Correcto, súbela un poquito, súbela un poquito, necesito que llegue a 90. Ya, ahí va subiendo, va subiendo. ¿Cuándo? Urgente el sector orilla de que me toca la temperatura. ¿A 13, 14? Sí, ya, a voy al tiro. Cuarteles 5, 6 y 7, necesito que eche a andar la bomba urgente. Ya, listo, bomba funcionando. Está llegando súper bien acá, súper bien. Cambio fuera. Lo que se consigue con estas lluvias artificiales en el fondo es bañar el brote que se congele por fuera, que se forme una capa de hielo sobre la yema. Es comparado con eh, el efecto iglú, o como llaman los militares, es meterse bajo la nieve para mantenerse a cero y no menos 5, menos 10 grados. Con eso controlamos que no se nos queme todo el viñedo. My father decided to achieve three impossible goals. The first one was planted in Casablanca 26 years ago. At this time, Casablanca was full of cattle. With no vines at no all. No vines at all, only cows. <laughs> Thanks to that, today we have 20 wineries involved in Casablanca Valley, um, more than 5,000 hectares planted. Wow. Look at this beautiful cluster, Oli. Pinot Noir. Beautiful. Yeah. This is the second goal of my father, mm -hmm. planting in Casablanca Pinot Noir when nobody there to do that. Delicious. But stop <laughs> picking my grapes. <laughs> I could eat your whole harvest. You know, Pinot Noir is really delicate. It's like a woman. It's like a diva. Exactly. Careful <laughs> treatment, but you know, all women should be treated like divas. <laughs> <laughs> the third goal of my father was planting in really high density. Yeah, yeah. In this area, we have 10,101 10, plants per hectare. It's a really high density. And that's to encourage competition and make the wine really, really premium. Yeah, you, you can see they're really close together. They the are, plants. and these are very narrow as well. Exactly. Is that something that's unique in Chile? Yes, this is the unique uh, project of high density this big in Chile. We have here uh, 130 hectares of high density. Isn't that a bit of a problem for getting the tractors in for maintenance? For that reason, we use uh, special tractors, very narrow uh, tractors. Well, hey, narrow tractors. Now, you know it's been my ambition since I was like three years old to drive a tractor. No it's, kidding. It's very yeah. easy to drive really? a, a tractor, yes. Is there any possibility of driving a tractor yes. today? Yes, you can do it. It's Are you nice. serious? You can drive one. Can I? You can do it. Really? Yes. <laughs> It's a typically native tree of Chile, Amoye. Amoye. For example, the name of this block is the Moye. Ah, so you name the vines, the blocks, exactly. after the native trees. Yes, that is the idea. Quillay, Boldo, Maiten, Algarrobo, Litre. Brilliant. Moye. I'd like to introduce this special wine. This is very unique. Uh, we produced the, during the 2000. It's the only one that we got the Nobel Road, the real Nobel Road, 100% botrytis. And it's special, it's sweet, and it's kind of a uh, god honey. Yeah, god honey, I yeah. love it. Thank you so much. It's an amazing, amazing color. Wow, that smells absolutely incredible. I'm a big fan of sweet wine, but that, the year 2000, you were blessed. Mm. That is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. The balance of sweetness with the acidity, luscious, rich, and yet it has that freshness with the acidity. It's a brilliant yeah. counterbalance. Good density. Yeah, really lovely, lovely. Yeah. Yes, oily, absolutely. It's Something in sweet, sweet wine people don't always realize 
that it can be as, as complex, if not more, than standard light dry wines, white or red. Sweet wine offers something completely unique for me, especially with botrytis. The noble rot. So you get the mist and the humidity, and yes. that will cause the rot and give this amazing elixir Absolutely. of the gods. Uh -huh. What did you call it, God's honey? Yeah. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Thank you for opening this. Hey.